Hi, welcome to How to Game a Tekka. This episode, I'm going to show you the basics of creating a game. So we're here on our personal space. And the first thing that we have to do is click on the new design button on the upper left tab. As you can see, we have many templates here, which you can use in order to create new games. But for now, we're going to create one from scratch. So we click on the button and then we will be taken to the game design editor screen. Um, and this is um, the, the main place where we create games. So you can see, for example, here we can change the title of the game. We're just going to call this one test game and we'll play OK. And then the next thing that we can do is edit roles. And as you can see, uh, we can have a different amount of roles. You can have a one player game or you can have a two player game or you can have a three player game. Um, just keep in mind that the more roles that you add, it becomes a bit more complicated. Um, and then you can obviously also have a facilitator if you want someone to come in to the game and give feedback throughout the gameplay. For now, we're not gonna press it because I don't want a facilitator. And then we click on save. Now that we have our player one and our player two, all we have to do is click on the plus button to start creating screens. So this is the screen editor and in it, you're able to create the screens of the game. And here you can also see the phone, which is a preview of how the game will look like. And here we can have um, the different things that we can do to the screen. So for example, we can change the title. So we're just gonna call this one screen one. Um, and then we can here add some text, but for now we're just gonna add hello. And then keep in mind that you can use bold, italics, bullets, numbering, or links. Um, then we have the quoting, and this just basically means that you take um, an answer or a reply of a diff of the same player or a different player into the screen. Um, do check out the video on quotes because I go into more detail on how to use them on that. And you can also have the media attachment which it can be none if you don't want anything to pop up. It can be an image if you want to upload an image, or it can be a video that can be uploaded from the computer or that can be embedded from YouTube. So for now, we're just gonna add a little image of a cat. Now for the fun part, the player task. The player task allows you to basically tell that player what you want them to do in that screen. So it can be complete button, which is the more basic one. They just click complete and then proceed to the next screen. It can be make a choice. And this works basically in, in, in a quiz sort of way in which you put a question and then options um, like A or B and then whatever you want them to choose and so on and so on. It can be a text feedback in which you ask them to write something down. It can be a photo upload if you want them to upload a photo or a video upload if you want them to upload a video. Now let's move on into the behavior. So in the behavior bit, basically you can add the preconditions and that just basically is how are the screens tied up one to each other. So like, for example, in a game that has three screens, you have to make sure that three comes after two and two comes after one. And this is how preconditions are used across one player or across multiple players. But I recommend you take a look at the video on preconditions so you can understand better how that works. Um, there's also scoring. If you want to add points after they finish one particular screen, you can add um, positive points, but you can also add negative points if they've done something wrong in the game. And also importantly, there is the end screen, which allows you to um, finish the game once the player has reached that screen. And then remember to always save that screen. So there we have it. We have created our first screen. We can have a little preview here also while we hover our mouse here. Um, remember that you can also test your game. Um, and then you can see how the game is developing. Um, and you can even try to record your own video here. And then click on submit and then do it for all the players. Uh, for now, we're going to close it, but now I suggest you to take a look at the other videos that go into more detail on how you're able to keep on creating and adding details to your game.